Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in the 10 minute workshop this week, we're going to take a look at Lidl's Parkside plunge saw to see if this is still worth considering when there's so many other entry level plunge saws on the market. That's coming up next. So, way back when I did my first Festool versus Tube Tool on the track saw, I had a bit of a dilemma about what track saw to use as the tube tool. I just bought the new Festool for myself. Uh, so that side of it was well taken care of, well covered. But on the tube tool side, well, Little had produced their Parkside saw just before, and it was a smash it, sold out really quickly. Uh, but it was a one-off, it was a, a, a special buy, special purchase. And I didn't want to review a saw that you couldn't buy. So I went with the Titan from Screwfix. The Titan uh, was a basic sort of entry level saw, still is, uh, and it still uh, represents excellent value for many. Uh, at the time, I paid about £90 for this one. These days, they're up to about 110 although they've been heavily discounted recently. Uh, uh, and that uh, video series went down really well. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, 18 months or so, and I wanted to do my track saw workshop series. Again, I'd missed the opportunity to buy a Parkside saw, those special buys come around every year, it turns out. And I went with uh, Aldi's Work Zone saw, uh, which is a, a, a clone of a Shepak saw. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed with this. And in fact, at the end of the Truck Saw Workshop series, when I compared the Aldi saw to the Titan, I actually recommended that you spend a little bit more and get the Titan rather than get the cheaper Aldi and then spend more money trying to get it up to scratch. Well, it turns out that uh, Lidl's Parkside saws are going to be on uh, sale again this coming week. In fact, this Thursday from June the 6th, and I still haven't bought one. I do, though, have one to take a look at, courtesy of subscriber Louis Carey. Now, when Louis uh, saw the Track Saw Workshop series, and I'd mentioned that I couldn't get hold of the Lidl Parkside, he said that he had a spare one. Louis buys a few of these tools quite a lot. I think he's had a, a few festivals. Uh, and the Parkside, and I think he's on a maffle now, so I don't think he's probably going to go any further. He's going he's to stick with that for the moment. But he has very generously donated this little Parkside to the channel so that I can take a quick look at it and see how it fares compared to the other two. So before we start, let's just get one thing clear. This isn't a full review of Little's Parkside track saw, plunge saw. This is more of a sort of a quick look to see if it's still worth considering when you think about all the other budget plunge saws there are on the market. I'm not going to show you how to set this up out of the box. I did all that in the track saw workshop series and if that's the kind of thing, that the kind of, that's the kind of detail that you want, then I'd recommend you go and take a look at the track saw workshop. Uh, but for now, let's start by taking a look at what you get in the box. So I've got to be honest, it's probably not going to take that long because there's not that much in the box. You get the basic saw, of course. A fixed cable. And you get a little adapter for the hose. You get a book of words. And you get the by now standard package of two to 700 mil rails. With just the one joining bar. And that's it. Now, when I say there's not a great deal in the box, that's certainly not a criticism of this saw. On the contrary, we need to remember that this is an entry level plunge saw, 65 quid for this whole thing is not much more than the price that some companies charge for a single 1400 mil guide rail. So it comes as no surprise then that the two guide rails that come in the box are two 700s with the joining bar. That's fairly typical for a saw of this type. But the tracks are slightly different. The guide rails are slightly different, although they conform to the standard sort of festool pattern of having a 16 mil rib in the center. Uh, the second rib is slightly different. It's more of a sort of a I don't know what you call it, a sort of a channel that isn't a channel, it's like an open lip almost. This means that when you do join the uh, parkside rails to a festival rail, you do get a, a, a slightly sort of unfortunate 
protuberance here it means that some of the accessories won't work so if you did want to use parallel guides or that sort of thing you will almost certainly have to use your own rather than use the stock festival items that aside the rails connect very smoothly to the festival rails and the saw does run very nicely across them both uh, one slight surprise uh, is that you do have a bit of a problem uh, with makita rails uh, normally if a saw fits a festal rail, it'll fit a Makita rail. But with a Makita rail, you have this extra little sort of lip. They call it an anti-tipping lip, uh, where the Makita saws and the uh, Titan saw, in fact, uh, has a little sort of foot that clips under there, which when you put the saw over to make a bevel cut, it stops it tipping over. But that lip actually gets in the way of the Parkside saw on this. So unfortunately, unless you can get the rail and are prepared to rip that lip off, uh, you're not really going to be compatible with Makita rails, which is a great shame. On the other hand, the saw is fully compatible with these Evolution pattern rails, very similar pattern to the Festool rails, and the Parkside saw runs on these very smoothly and very comfortably. Uh, we'll have some more on these Evolution rails in a future video, but these are shaping up to be uh, an absolute bargain if you are on the lookout for a pair of 1400 rails with clamps and a bag. So what else can we say about the saw? Um, not a whole lot, to be honest. It is a fairly standard budget entry-level offering. It is a 1200 watt motor, brushed motor, of course, at this sort of level. Uh, the motor runs at 5200 RPM, so sort of between the, the Aldi Shepak saw uh, and the Titan saw. It has a 165 mil blade like the Titan, uh, unlike the Festool and the Aldi saws which have a 160mm blade. It's a standard 20mm bore, uh, has a 2.6mm kerf on the blade that's supplied, so a little bit fatter, so watch out for that. If you do trim your splinter guards back with this blade and then change blades, you'll probably find that the blade that you replace it with will have a slightly thinner kerf. Uh, 165mm blades are available for Makita and Triton saws, so lots of blade choice available for those plus, of course, from the usual third parties. The 165mm blade gives it a very slightly deeper depth of cut, 52mm, uh, on the track. But other than that, it is a fairly typical, fairly standard offering. Uh, the next thing we need to do, really, is to uh, get the splinter guard trimmed back on one of the guide rails, and let's give it a test cut. There are no tools required to settle the saw onto the track, just an easy hand turn on a cam and the saw runs smoothly and easily. And with the splinter guard trimmed back, we're ready to make our first cut. So as we did with the previous saw tests, uh, this is just a straightforward cut in cross grain, birch ply, on the good side and the waste side, just to see what sort of effect the, the stock blade is. and the stock blade produces a perfectly usable cut on both sides with the standard guide rail and splinter guard. So there we are, that's the whistle stop tour around Little's Parkside track saw plunge saw. Is it still relevant given the other competition there is at the entry level? Yeah, absolutely, I think it's excellent. Um, if we want to get really picky, then the uh, exhaust port is a little bit floppy, you need some tape around that, so that'll just drive you nuts. Festival is exactly the same. Uh, it's disappointing, I can't deny, that the base plate is that little bit wider, that it won't run on Makita tracks or the Titan track, any of the tracks that have that little anti-tipping lip thing on it. Uh, that's a shame, but to be honest, with the Evolution rails coming out, uh, I don't think that's that much of a problem. Uh, you can get extra rail from Lidl. I think you actually have to speak through their customer service and they put you onto the manufacturers directly. But you do only get 14, uh, excuse me, 700 mil lengths. So, you know, you end up, if you did want to cut a full sheet, you'd end up with four 700 mil lengths, which is not ideal because you've got, you know, three joins in there. Uh, on the other hand, they are very cheap and they are very accessible. I think it's less than a tenner per rail, so extremely good value for money. Uh, as is this actual saw, 65 quid or thereabouts for a fully functioning plunge saw. I'd put it absolutely on par with the Titan, uh, better in some ways. Uh, the blade is okay, uh, it's not great, but it's not 
terrible, certainly way, way better than the blade that you get in the Aldi saw, and probably on par uh, with the blade in the Titan. Um, I, I'd like to put a, a better blade in it, but certainly the uh, tracks that come with it in terms of the splinter guards and the grippy strips underneath are far and away better than the Aldi tracks. Again, certainly on par uh, with the Titan tracks. So overall, it's a really, really solid package for 65 quid, if of course you can get your hands on them. But that's it for this video. Now, before I go, I'd like to give another huge shout out and say thank you once again to subscriber Louis Carey for letting me have access to this saw. It was extremely generous of Louis. And without this generosity, uh, this video probably wouldn't have been made in such a timely way, to be honest, as I'd more than likely still be queuing up to buy one of the little Parkside saws. I hope you've enjoyed this video though, and I hope you found it useful. And perhaps if it's been useful enough to have saved you a few quid by buying the Parkside saw, perhaps instead of something more expensive, then do consider supporting the channel. I've through Patreon or directly with PayPal as it's this support that really does help to keep the lights on here. Uh, there are links to all methods of supporting the channel down in the video description below but that really is it for this week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.